All right, <clears throat> I'm Roger Boxnick. And, uh, I'm John Thieblick. Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, all right, so the first thing, uh, this game Aurora Sector, as you found out from the titles, uh, what is Aurora Sector? Well, at its core, Aurora Sector is a racing game. You are competing against other players, trying to achieve the best time. But not only that, it's set in space. <laughs> Which you probably already figured out as well. <laughs> but we're taking it even a step further. This is where it gets really interesting. There's guns. Okay? There's nothing, there's no game like this on the market. That's true. Uh, now if you go into the options menu, you're going to see some more cool stuff. We can change resolution, it's all pretty standard. We can toggle full screen. Uh, we can also uh, change the key configuration, which is pretty vital because it's a pretty, pretty complex game, so there's, there's a lot of keys. Alright, it's pretty cool. You want to talk about the ship building? All right, let's talk about the ship building. All right, so if you go into single player, first thing you're gonna do, well, you're gonna select your level, then you're gonna hit begin. And what you're gonna see is your ship. Uh, now, in the upper right, uh, the things on the top are your categories uh, for all the different uh, types of things you can put on your ship, and then under each one, whichever one's on the most furthest right is what's selected. Then there's the different types of things you can choose from. So if he switches out the holes right now, you can see it update on screen. Uh, now in the lower left, you can see there's detail for whatever's selected. So he's got, you know, the, that's called the Desiato. It's got, you know, a certain amount of hit points, certain amount of maneuverability. Uh, everything except the holes uh, takes power. So the idea here is to build the best ship you can, depending on the course, obviously, and then still remain within your power requirement. Uh, <coughs> You want to make a ship that's illegal? Show them that. Just for fun. Yeah. All right. Here's this is the. There's only two rules for building ships. You can't have negative power, obviously, and you can't have two of the same option. Uh, so again, if John tries to go into the game with that ship, it won't let him. And if he tries to go in with negative power, it won't let him. All right. Move on to the next thing. Roger can take over the lovely assistant job. <laughs> so now after we build our ship, all we need to do is hit enter. Assuming it's legal, we can enter right into the game. Uh, you've seen a little bit from the video, but uh, we'll walk you through a little bit. So how did we do this? Uh, you saw some of the motion from the, uh, the video. It's a very complicated uh, program, so we needed to be sure to break things down into a logical structure so that we can control everything. So what we have done is we created a scene graph, which handles all of the... So there's a lot of fun to be had. <laughs> Probably because you can't see where you're going. <laughs> all right, so now let's talk about the HUD. On the lower left is your radar. Uh, you can see that plane. Uh, that represents the plane that basically your wings are on. Um, the green dot in the center is you, blue dots are checkpoints, yellow dots would be missiles, but he doesn't have any missiles right now, and red dots are enemies. Um, you can kind of see these lines coming off of everywhere. Um, the lines are projected, it's a 3D radar, first of all, it's the first thing you have to understand. The lines are projected from that plane to the object, so that line Based on where that line is and where that dot is, you know your brain can kind of figure it out pretty quick. Uh, if you're above or below, pointed above or below the object you're trying to get to or avoid, so it's pretty intuitive once you get used to it. On the bottom center there, you can just see how many checkpoints he's passed in his total time in the race. Lower right is uh, just hit point bars. If he smacks into stuff, you'll see. Or if he goes out of bounds, he'll start getting damaged. Uh, on the, the right of the screen is just his thrust display, and he just lost a weapon there. You can blow off weapons and engines, so like if you lose one engine, you're pretty much crippled. Now he doesn't have any weapons left. 
the objects that are in the game and their interactions. The scene graph is connected to a level manager and a ship manager. Uh, it's the level manager that's responsible for loading all of the uh, in-game scenery objects, like the asteroids and the checkpoint that Roger's right next to, as well as the space stations and uh, anything else you'll find floating in space. Um, it's the level manager and the ship manager that are responsible for all of the drawing and the collision. Uh, how we did the collision detection is when an object is checking to see if it's running into anything, it just calls the scene graph collide function. So it's just one check, and that will run through all of the other objects and uh, perform the, the collision detection, which is an important part of the game. And I think Raj is going to take us over, and we'll show you a little bit more about the controls and the uh, mechanics of a single player. All right. Um, so let's talk about how this controls a little bit, because I'm sure you're all going to want to play it after we're done here. Um, uh, the problem with making space games is that physics in space are obviously a lot different from they are, and uh, from they are right now in atmosphere. And if we were to make a space game that had realistic physics, it wouldn't be any fun at all. You know, you'd, you'd thrust forward and then you'd have to, you know, exactly turn around and thrust the same amount to stop and stuff like that. Just no fun. So we tried to find a happy medium between uh, just straight kind of like atmospheric type flying and you know the, the slipping that will happen in space. Um, Let's talk about what's on screen here. Huh? Oh yeah, we're not talking about slipping. Good call. All right, there's one last feature. Are you doing it right now? You were. All right, you hold down the control key by default, and you'll keep sliding in the direction you were traveling. So basically, your thrusters are shut off. And see, this this is what we were talking about before, like real space physics. This is what would happen. But we decided it's it's a cool enough thing and you might want to do it in-game, like say you're racing down a corridor, or somebody's behind you, start slipping, shut off your thrusters, whip around, and shoot at them, but you're still traveling in the same direction. There's also a suicide key, so if you're in a state where you feel you're completely worthless, <laughs> you can just suicide <laughs> and go back to the last checkpoint.